It's New Year's Eve and all the New York punks are out to dance to NPC music on television. However, one slasher villain is tormenting the host with a countdown of murder to midnight. Will the authorities catch him in time before the new year? Will the host survive? And will there be a frame of this film without vinyl leather in it? Find out this New Year's Evil. Hello there you loose units and welcome back to another episode of Spicy Boy Rewind Reviews where we go back and look at a cult classic through fresh eyes. It's the last review for 2023 so let's look at the slasher flick from 1980, New Year's Evil. Directed by Emmett Alston. Known for directing the Oscar snub movies Three Way Weekend, Tiger Shark and Force of the Ninja. It's New Year's Eve and we open the film on a live music TV show counting down to midnight. Think the show like Top of the Pops, or for Australian Millennials, Recovery. Or Aussie Boomers, Countdown. However, this show is aimed specifically at New York punks. It's a sea of goth makeup, black lipstick, an ocean of vinyl leather aplenty, and as much androgyny as you can poke a stick at. See, Gen Zers, you didn't invent the shit. We meet our narcissistic host, Diane, who has no time for her son and only cares about her live TV music show. Her son is all kinds of weird and ends up after this going on eight years later to piss off some killer clowns from outer space. He's feeling neglected by his famous mummy poos. And he's just your average normal 20-something. He's just doing run-of-the-mill normal things like shelving pingers, wearing stockings on his head and talking to himself. But mummy ain't got time for this mess, and the show must go on. However, it's not long before she receives a call live on air from a slasher villain calling himself evil through a voice modulator. He states that every hour leading up to midnight, he is going to kill an unsuspecting victim until it hits midnight where he's after her. But Diane's having none of it! She calls the cops and the authorities bunker down the live TV show building, having cops at every exit. Then we meet our slasher villain. He's a handsome, charming man with a great head of hair, charming women aplenty all through the night, and then getting them on side and killing them. <laughs> a handsome stranger who charms women and then kills them? Yeah, sounds pretty far-fetched. <gasps> Unlike most slasher villains, we get to see the killer's face straight away. And it isn't until the climax of the film when he dons a mask. And he's putting his hat in the ring with the slasher greats, choosing his slasher villain weapon. We know that Michael Myers loves his kitchen knife, Jason Voorhees loves his machete, Freddy has a stiffy for his knife glove, My Bloody Valentine has his pickaxe, and Evil has his... switchblade? <laughs> How very 1980 New York of you. But do we find out what the killer's motivation is with a twisty twist at the end? You bet your cotton socks we do, and not spoiling anything, we find out the motivation of the killer is... Misogyny. Yeah, I'm not kidding, that's pretty much it. See, Gen Zers, you didn't invent the shit. But even though we see the killer's face from minute one, we do find out who he actually is with a twisty twist at the end. This film is obviously a repercussion from a little indie film that was made on a shoestring budget and made a shit ton of money called Halloween. Then came the flood of holiday themed slasher films straight afterwards. We had Friday the 13th, Better Watch Out, Prom Night, Graduation Day, My Bloody Valentine, Slumber Party Massacre, April Fool's Day, and of course this film. The gore and the killing of this film is pretty low-key here, nothing special. I think the goriest film of this year was easily Friday the 13th. The music in the bands in this movie is the most run-of-the-mill, generic, punk music they could have slapped together in an afternoon, and I'm all for it. It's the kind of music and bands that you would see in here in a cutscene while you're on a mission in a video game. This film is obviously based all in one night, which I think all the best horror films are. There's a lot of out of focus shots here, obviously being a rush production, and some really bad ADR. But however, it all adds to the charm of the low budget cheese. It's not a hidden gem, I don't think, and I don't think it's a really big cult classic underground, not that I'm aware of, but it is a bit of fun. It's your run of the mill cheesy 80s slasher film, I like it. It would be perfect wedge between some other films uh, during a movie marathon. Also, this movie is free on YouTube, which is exactly where I watched it, so go check it out. 
Anyway, guys, that's my cheeky little review of New Year's Evil. Write down below if you've seen it. What are your thoughts on it? But more importantly, what is your favourite holiday theme slasher? And of course, if you've made it this far into the episode, please give me a thumbs up because your love and support keeps me going because I just love movies and I assume you do as well. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe icon because I give it an episode weekly and I'll see you back here next year for the next review. And until then, stay spooky, kids.